Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reeder from thebiblicalnutritionist.com. And today, what we're going to talk about is what are the nine critical blood tests that everyone should get now? You've heard me talk about getting blood work before because it's a subject that I'm very passionate about. It is so important for us to get that inside view of what's really happening in our body. I mean, your doctor orders blood work when you go, well, you should order blood work every time you go to, for him to get a view. But yet there are times that we can be very proactive and get the blood work ordered ourselves and see for ourselves what's actually going on. I get more blood work done than I do go to the doctor because that way I know exactly what's going on. Yet, what are the tests that you need to have ordered? This is what I want you to know. The more I can help educate you, the more you can be proactive in your health. Therefore, we don't have any surprises of a diagnosis that we weren't expecting. So today I have one of my favorite guests, Dr. Jay Hitson. She's going to join us and share with us what are the nine critical blood tests that everyone should get now. So the nine critical blood tests, as we go through now, some of these, they get ordered a lot, but you just don't quite get the values. And then some of them just are very, very rarely ordered. So I'm going to kind of start with my number one, A1C. So many times only glucose is being run, but not necessarily A1C. And that's the one that really tells you where you're at with regards to type two diabetes. Now, type two diabetes is, is just running rampant. And it's so, so very, very important that you know where you're at on that spectrum so that you can start making changes because type two diabetes is one of the most reversible conditions out there. And frankly, with regards to with regards to reversibility, it's also one of the most dangerous disease processes. So once type two diabetes takes hold, it can be hard, not impossible, but it can be hard to turn back. And also it just has so many negative health consequences. So A1C. One of the next ones is GFR, glomerular filtration rate. Okay, it's, it's the, what that really means is how well are your kidneys really doing. All right. You can have a lot of other factors that are off, but it's important that you as an individual know how your kidneys are functioning because a lot of times your physicians are not going to be bringing this up because there's just not a lot of drugs and pharmaceuticals for the kidneys. The standard of care with kidney disease, a lot of times is we wait and see. And what they mean by wait and see is we wait until you get to the point where your, your filtration rate is so low that you need dialysis when so many things can be done to reverse that well before you ever get to those points. So understanding where is that GFR and making sure to take action on that if there are any issues. One of my other favorites that is commonly ordered, but just not discussed is what's called A-S-T-A-L-T, A-S-T-A-L-T. And these are liver markers. Now, so many people get told, oh, you have fatty liver, you have elevated liver enzymes. So many people are being just like, it's it's almost like a, a, a sidebar type thing that they're, you know, like, oh yeah, your, your liver ele you know, enzymes are elevated and, you know, and then they just kind of move on. One of the reasons why people, they just kind of move on is because again, there's not actually a whole lot of pharmaceuticals out there to address liver. <laughs> the liver is such a wonderful natural filter. It filters out all the pharmaceuticals. So they just haven't found anything that, that does a good job of addressing what's going on with your liver. So knowing where that's at, because if you are having issues, you can take action. The liver has amazing ability to regenerate and to heal if you just know what to do. So checking those numbers. Number four is ferritin. This is probably one of my favorite markers because it's so very rarely tested for. Ferritin is how much iron storage you have. Now, I'm gonna tell you a lot of you, this is just not really an issue, but there is a genetic condition called hemochromatosis that is in 20% of all people from English, Irish, Scottish descent. 
And when you have that particular marker, when you have hemochromatosis, when you have that underlying genetic factor, it can cause uh, so many health issues. But if you just know that you have it and get it addressed early on, it never takes a hold It never take, and you never experience the negative health side effects. So just even getting that checked, um, it doesn't show up in women um, as early. It, a lot of times with women, it shows up later in life. Um, men, it can show up significantly earlier. So just, just know where your ferritin is. And furthermore, if there has been any kind of those kind of health issues, if, if ferritin is an issue, if hemochromatosis is an issue, the other people in your family really need to get checked. I would say number five, this is another one of my favorites that does not get addressed very often. Um, we call it TPO, thyroid peroxidase. It's really the marker that we look for that is behind Hashimoto's. Most of the time, the in a standard panel, they only run something called TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone, which is just a hormone from your brain. And as long as that one's in range, they don't worry, they don't look at anything else. But if you happen to have TPO, which is associated with an autoimmune, if you happen to have that one marker, you can prevent a significant amount of damage to your thyroid, not in the meat, just in the media, but over a lifetime. It's incredible what that one marker, and there's, it's simple, the things that you can do that can keep you from ever having thyroid issues. But if you don't know, if you don't get it checked, then, then you, you don't know to implement those steps. So that would be, that's another one of my favorites that goes wi widely unchecked. And even if they do check it, Unfortunately, a lot of the the you know the standard allopathic they they just don't know what to do with it because again there's no drug for it. <laughs> Number six, vitamin D. <sighs> vitamin D. It's so simple. Now that one is starting to get checked more and more, which I'm I'm really excited about. I'm very very encouraged that so many of the doctors are starting to look at vitamin D, um, especially as we get older. Now, when we're younger, you have to ask for it. Um, but you do want to get that one checked because vitamin D affects so many areas of your body. Like, a, a, again, a lot of people don't know that your thyroid really consumes vitamin D. So if you don't have enough vitamin D, sometimes your thyroid function can be off just because of that. Now, I will say, I, I've been following the biblical nutritionist, I've been following the, the biblical nutritionist family, and I, the, the products that you are recommending, they are amazing. I see the I see these people's panels, and their numbers look gorgeous. So I, I have to give just a, a, a incredible shout out to the, the products that you're recommending here, because they are absolutely working. And you can tell a difference in between the people who are on them and the people who are not on the vitamin D. Number seven, number seven would be inflammation. Inflammation has become such a big buzzword. And we definitely hear a lot about inflammation nowadays, but is it really your problem is, is the question. Uh, people assume just because I hurt, I must have a lot of inflammation. Just because I'm lethargic, I must have a lot of inflammation. And, and it's just because of a lot of the, the buzz that's out there. My experience is there's a, it's, it's, it's a big problem for some people and it's not a problem for other people. You need to know which category you're in because you could be taking a whole lot of things. And, and frankly, you could be, you could be wasting a lot of your financial resources on products you just don't need. I, while I have people who are, they, they, before we get on and before they see their blood work, they're like, I know I have so much inflammation. I know I have so much inflammation, but then we look at the markers and I test it twice. Um, I, I test CRPs and ESRs. I, I look at it in both ways. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it really isn't in something totally different that's causing their symptoms. So inflammation, you need to know which camp you're in. Uh, is this a problem or just is it not? Number eight, and I'm going to look at this a little bit different. You know, there's a, a what's called a lipid panel, which is your, your cholesterol. All right. And everybody knows about cholesterol. That's been a big, that's been a big thing. I really want to look at it though, from a standpoint of your coronary risk factor. So you want to look at your triglycerides 
And then you want to look at your HDL and you want to get a good comparison between the two to get what's called a coronary arrest factor. I know that sounds complicated. Don't worry. It, you know, whenever I do these, I, I run all these numbers for you and I just guide you through this whole process. So, but coronary risk factor, according to the National Institute of Health, is a far greater predictor of real imminent coronary events. Now, that's the way they like to say it. We don't like to say the word heart attack, coronary events. But you know, the, the coronary risk factor is a really much more accurate predictor. And again, so many people are getting pressured with regards to statins and cholesterol lowering medications. And you just really need to know where are you in this spectrum and you know how how much of a risk factor do you really have? And the last one and this is one of my favorites, is cortisol. Now, uh, getting blood cortisol has been fascinating for so many people because while a lot of us have stress, a lot of us has, have anxiety, while absolutely, you know, these are all mental health is a major issue, you need to know how is it affecting you though physically? You know, is are the stress levels is this starting to become an issue on a physical level, not just on, from a mental health standpoint? And this has been very, this has been a really, and it's given people a good barometer to know, okay, the steps that I'm taking for my mental health, okay, it's working. This is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the values getting better and having that baseline to work off of. Um, also, it's just been a wake up call for a lot of individuals that, you know what, I, I need to start taking it easy. I need to start paying attention to me. I need to start making me a priority because if I don't, frankly, my, my health is going to suffer. So, while there's a lot of other factors, and I definitely test for more in, in our standard exploratory panel, those are by far my absolute nine most critical, most revealing factors that my patient base is frankly most appreciative for. And I totally agree with you. And they totally just keep sending emails saying thank you for Dr. J. I really appreciate you sharing this. And it helps people to break it down. Yes, there are probably if we added them up, there's probably over 100 and 200 different tests people could have run. But yet if we get the main ones and keep them the main ones, then we can pay attention to so many systems in our body. So thank you for this list. And I just want to thank you for being a part of the biblical nutritionist family, a good referral that I can send people to that I can trust. And I know they're going to be in good hands. I've tried using other physicians in the past, but then things change. And I just feel so, um, uh, like it's a privilege. It is a privilege to have you on our team and just to be able to send people to you. So we will put links to your exploratory blood panels down below. People can go and check that out. Also on the website, which is blueumbrellamedical.com. They can go there and check that out. And always remember for those of you watching, we change our blood values best by what we eat. And that is totally the quickest way to make a change. And it's always going to be, no matter what food diet plan guru you follow, it's always going to be the foods that God called good for us. And that's why it's so simple. And we don't have to worry about, okay, well, I was on that diet, but it changed. And now that's not good. And now this one's good. You don't have to get caught up in the winds of opinion when you can just eat the foods God called good and eat them as close to the way as he designed it. And then we're not caught up in the processed food, the fads, the trends, and all of that. And sometimes people will ask me, Annette, what about this food? What about that supplement? And I say, well, that supplement is mostly synthetic, and which means my body's going to have to work harder to try to get it to work, or I can choose foods first. And if I do need a supplement, which Dr. J will recommend some that you may need, then I know it's going to come from a natural source. So give me some herbs, some extracts, and let's see how the body can work with that. So definitely eating a food diet, similar to like a Mediterranean style, but the three principles. So check out my book, Treasures of Healthy Living to really understand how those work, the three principles. There you're going to study all of the scripture from Genesis to Revelation and just discover for yourself everything that God taught us about food. I had one person read through that and she says, Annette, this is like a cookbook. I said, it is. The Bible is like a cookbook. 
And another girl was telling me recently, she's been reading a lot of my books, but she finally picked up the treasures and she said, this should be mandatory. She says, this is so full of such great content. And I agree with her, but I can't really make it mandatory. <laughs> I'll let you to choose that on your own. So Dr. J, thank you again for joining us for another very insightful, very educational video. And just so that everyone can be aware of this. And just remember, she is in the United States and maybe in, in time, we will be able to service people around the country. But for right now, it is just in the United States. And I know she would love to service people um, around the world, but we'll just leave that into God's timing. For the rest of you, go to my website, thebiblicalnutritionist.com. Check out the seven steps to amazing biblical health. It's a free resource. It's how I get all of my clients started on a health journey. And if that's not enough for you, which many of you are going to say, okay, that's good, but I need more, then go to our Biblical Nutrition Academy, where you can choose the courses where you want to start learning all about your health from a biblical perspective. Thanks for letting me share with you God's recipe for excellent health. And until next time, thanks for watching.